Yo! I had a little voice crack at the beginning then. If you heard it, high five to you. If you didn't, it never happened. Um, it is your boy, the French Ted, and we are here, we are back. I'm not going to lie, I've missed LLW. I really have. Um, I woke up this morning and had a stroke of genius, um, and I ended up writing, I think six seven episodes worth of shows so um i figured i'd stop there and actually record a few so i'm here recording right now um obviously you guys aren't watching it while i'm recording because it's september for me and it'll be october when this comes out i think at least but anyways let's stop waffling let's stop chatting shit we're here the tournament is well underway. We've got some more first round matches in this episode. I think we've got the last first round matches in this episode because the following week, hold on, let me just look at my ridiculously long schedule spreadsheet. Uh, yeah, next episode, the second round begins, which is exciting. And there's probably someone on this screen that you're thinking, who the bloody hell is that? And that is Arlene Corbett. Um, yeah, Arlene is a new signing. She came through our uh, training school and I figured, screw it, I'll throw her in a match. And she's doing just as good as Shakara, who is an LLW original. So, you know, not bad. Um, that's the picture that the game chose for her at random. Um, Actually, no, that's not true. Wait, did it? I don't know how it works. It's been a while. Um, either way, that's what Arlene looks like. I might change her name if she becomes a regular because Arlene Corbett doesn't really sound like a wrestler, does it? Um, but either way, she did okay. She got the win in this pre-show match with a solar cloverleaf. Um, we'll take a look at her at the end of the episode because that's when we're going to review um, you know, the finances and stuff. But yeah, she did okay. 34. She's a diva, apparently. Went over as great. Uh, we've got the gimmick here. Um, yeah. Can't complain. 45 rating tag team match just to get some people on the board. You know what it's like. Um, and yeah, we've got another pre-show match as well. And the reason why I did this one, 73, oh, was Leon Slater. There was a backstage incident and I thought, oh, I haven't seen one of these in a while. But it was a positive one. It was Leon Slater uh, organising a poker tournament that everyone loved. So what I tend to do in my series, which you guys don't really see, and I don't really comment on that much, is when there's a positive backstage incident um, and that person isn't being used for whatever reason, give them a little pre-show win, because why not? It only helps them. Um, and yeah, Leon Slater got a really good win here against A-Kid, who also is pretty great. So we've got some really good talent that... I don't know what to do with, so we'll have to wait and see uh, what my my booking brain does. But let's not waste any more time. Let's head straight into the main show where we kick off with, of course, a tournament match. And it is Axeman Tisha's turn in the tournament as he looks to take on Callum Newman, I believe. Wait, wait. Callum Newman, yes, I mean, we could just hit next segment and find out, but Bobby Guns is leading Axeman Tisha to the ring. Of course, these guys are a duo, um, or more like Bobby Guns is the leader and Axeman Tisha is kind of the, the heavy. Um, but Axeman Tisha has an opportunity here to really push himself up the LLW ladder um, and really signify himself as a single star because recently he was in a tag team with Damo, um, which didn't work very well. So let's see what he can produce here in his first round match against Callum Newman, who has been kind of spicy, let's be honest. And in the 73 rated match, it is Callum Newman that gets the win in 24 minutes by submission. Callum Newman, in my eyes, is kind of like, I don't want to say the next Will Ospreay, but the achievements that Osprey can achieve, I think Newman is like the understudy, if that makes sense. Uh, like he's under Osprey's wing, you could say. Um, and yeah, but either way, Newman makes it through. He is through to the next 
round, which is very, very exciting. He will be facing the winner of the main event tonight in the next round. We'll have to wait and see who that is. But if you remember from the last episode, you could do the math. Um, but yeah, Tisha not doing the best with a 66. Uh, Newman with an 85. See what I mean? He's a beast. A beast. A little beast. Um, but yeah, Tisha obviously disappointed with this loss, especially having tapped out to Callum Newman. But yeah, 73. Not too bad. I will take it. So let's just uh, keep rolling where we have a special debut. And if you've seen the thumbnail, I think you know who it is. It is Valkyrie. We signed Valkyrie or Lyra Valkyria, whatever her name is in NXT. She's back to her usual name of Valkyrie uh, or her, you know, her independent name, I guess. Um, and she's here against Danny Luna. And in 21 minutes, she defeats Danny Luna with the guillotine, uh, debuting her warrior princess gimmick, getting over as very good, which is great to see. Um, and yeah, decent win. 58, not bad. Something we can work on as her popularity grows because her pop isn't as high as you'd expect. Um, NXT talents in this mod that I'm using were, you know, quite harshly scored. So whenever I pull anyone from NXT, um, a little bit of work needs doing. But whereas I pull them from anywhere else and they're, they're kind of OK. Um, but yeah, I think that's mostly so that the AI in the mod doesn't just promote everyone in NXT to WWE so that's probably why they do it um but either way she got a win even though Danny Luna was off her game it's still a solid score of 56 I'll take that um Danny Luna's not exactly top of the card or anything for me um Valkyria maybe in the future who knows I mean Danny Luna maybe in the future who knows but a really good win and as with most of our debuts post-match William Regal comes into the ring um congratulates Valkyrie and of course introduces the LLW crowd to our newest signing and of course both Regal and Valkyrie doing some really good stuff here off script you know kind of chatting with each other talking about you know where they want to go Valkyrie's obviously she says it's early days she's looking to find her feet in LLW but she'll never say no to a challenge she'll never back down and of course titles are in her future uh, so William Regal just, you know, gives her a little bit of advice, you know, keep your head down, focus, you got this, high five. So, uh, yeah, let's continue with the show, which I believe uh, we head backstage now, uh, seeing a little bit of the fallout between uh, Axel Tisha and Bobby Gunn. So Bobby Gunn's, of course, is very annoyed and frustrated with Axeman Tisha. So, of course, Tisha probably thought he was going to win. You know, big guy versus little guy, you know. But it's that David and Goliath thing. Callum Newman used his speed, used his technical ability to just overcome Axeman Tisha. And Bobby Guns, of course, um, is, is annoyed. He's embarrassed because he says that, you know, you don't just represent yourself. You're representing us. And, you know, am I going to have to carry all the weight in this duo? Or do I maybe need to find someone else to hang out with and tish is kind of like a little bit apologetic but he's also like shut the fuck up mate all right so uh yeah bobby guns of course you know showing that he is the the leader of this too um making it very very clear and apparent to tisha and doing a pretty good job at it too we know that bobby guns has got charisma out the ass so uh yeah let's keep moving on and back to the ring where we have some tag team action and it is between our Knights of the Lariat League, our current tag team champions, New Blood, taking on the KO squad in a non-title match. And about that had pretty good wrestling, a 71, and a decent reaction from the crowd. It is, of course, New Blood that get the win. A pretty dominant display here um, against Anthony Agogo and Leon. No, not Leon. Levi Muir. Um, when Diamante makes a go-go tap with the Diamante special. Uh, Levi was the weak link, which sucks. Um, Anthony Gogo was off his game, but still got a 66, which I'm pretty happy with. Um, and of course, we know that Ishin and Diamante have really good chemistry, uh, which is why they're such a good tag team. Uh, 71 overall. I'm very happy with that considering these scores. So, yeah, can't complain. Good, solid win. Nice little card filler um, as we make our way slowly to our main event tournament match. But first, Valkyrie is backstage, you know, greeting people, 
saying you know hi to everyone introducing herself when the champion will osprey who is close to full recovery belt over shoulder just you know stops valkyrie for a second and just says i want to welcome you to lariat league wrestling i've seen what you can do i've seen what you've done in the past and i must say i'm very excited to have you here and obviously valkyrie's like well, thank you so much will i've seen what you do and i'm excited to be here and there's kind of like a little bit of a look between these two and then uh, as osprey walks off valkyrie has like a not a fangirl moment but a little bit of like a whoa will osprey just said that i was this so uh yeah will osprey is an admirer of valkyrie uh whether that's purely professional or not it's not my place to say but um if anything progresses we'll see <laughs> Um, but now we do head to the main event and it is, um, of course, featuring Dan Maloney, uh, the member of the 0121 as Deris is hyping him up ahead of that main event match. Just saying it's time for the driller and the 0121 to finally prove their point. You know, Dan Maloney is one of those people. He's had a handful of title opportunities in his LLW career and he's just never ever managed to get it so he says this tournament is where things change for himself and the 0121 so Deris is right by his side as he has been since almost day one um and yeah we're just hoping that this turns into something special but unfortunately Dan Maloney is up against Pac <laughs> and you know what happens when people face Pac they tend to lose and that's exactly what happens to Dan Maloney, unfortunately, in a very hard-fought, superb match. 26 minutes, um, Pac does eventually defeat um, Dan Maloney with the Brutalizer, um, you know, his patented submission move. So Pac advances and will face Callum Newman in the next round. And that is the last of this show. And we've got two more first round matches in the next show, which of course is going to happen in the next couple of minutes. Uh, but let's finish this one and see how we did. Uh, 79 overall. Love that. We're coasting on those high 70s, which I'm very, very happy with. We're going to keep coasting on those high 70s, maybe even break into the 80s every now and then. Um, but yeah, Pac and Callum Newman are through. Um, Bobby Gunn's not happy with Axeman losing. New Blood's just keeping up that momentum of being our tag champs. And a great debut from Valkyrie, which not only we appreciate, but Will Ospreay appreciates too. In the next show, which is coming up in a couple of minutes, or less than a minute, let's be honest, uh, we've got the final two um, first round matches, which is Chaz Betts and Ricky Knight Jr. and Tyler Bate and Cara Noir. The latter will main event the show. Uh, we've also got some tag team action with Lycos Jim, and we've also got the return of a former queen of the Lariat League. See you guys in a sec. Okay, no need for any pre-show here because I fulfilled all the requirements in the main show. So yeah, haha. <laughs> um, and we kick off with Aisha Ray, the returning. Aisha Ray. it's been a little while since we've properly seen her, former queen of the Lariat League and an OG in LLW, taking on Kanji in our opening match. And Aisha Ray pulls off the win, of course she does, with the big tree slam. A 60 from Aisha Ray, a 45 from Kanji, and Aisha Ray is back and just as bad as ever. You can take that in whichever way you want. Um, 56, not bad, not great. Uh, Aisha Ray used to be our go-to girl. Do you remember back in the day? She was top of the top of the top of the tree, we'll say, because the tree slam. Um, but obviously, as we've grown, she's slowly falling down a little. She's like the Ashton Smith of um, the women's division, you could say. Ashton Smith was our boy. I mean, he's still our boy. He's still our boy. Is he? Mm, we'll see. Um, but yeah, Aisha Ray gets a nice win uh, and post match she grabs the microphone just says that she is back to claim her place in the london siren title picture because may sarah sarah 
she has not forgotten what happened. May embarrassed her and Aisha is keen to take that title away from May. Yep, that works. Um, and, but she says that she'll prove it. She says here, and I will earn it. I'm not asking for a title match. I am going to earn it. So you're going to see a lot more of me in the next couple of weeks. And all that's going to be happening is me getting that one, two, three. And then she just drops the mic, puts her glasses back on, and fucks off out the ring. Because uh, she is a badass. Uh, and benefit from a hot catchphrase. Maybe that's the one I just made up. You know, getting the one, two, three. That could be her catchphrase. Who knows? Um, maybe her new finisher is the one, two, three tree slam. Or the one, two, tree slam. One, two, tree. I don't know. We're riffing here. Um, but let's move on to the next segment, which is just before our penultimate first round match, where Chaz Betts grabs William Regal backstage and just says, Will, you need to make sure that Phantasma does not get involved in my match with Ricky Knight Jr. I'm not having him cost my place in this tournament. And William Regal's like, first of all, get your hands off me. Second of all, it is not my place to decide if El Hijo del Fantasma wishes to interfere or not. If anything, I'd be surprised if he doesn't, given the actions that have gone on between the two of you over the last weeks, no, months. So if El Hijo del Fantasma does interfere in the match and the referee spots this, then it's down to the referee's judgment on whether it's a disqualification or not. If he does not interfere, then great. But ultimately, Chaz, you should probably focus on yourself, focus on Ricky Knight Jr. and focus on the match. Because as you said, this tournament is an opportunity to face the LLW King. Something you have not done yet. So maybe focus on that instead of focusing on El Hijo del Fantasma. Best of luck out there. And William Regal kind of gives him a little pat on the head and wanders off. And Chaz is just like, what the hell, bro? Like, what? Um, but he is up next. Chaz is making his way to the ring now as he takes on Ricky Knight Jr. in his first round tournament match. And in all honesty, we all knew what was going to happen, didn't we? I mean, I did. Um, in about that, again, had superb wrestling. That's just that's all we do here. That's all we do. Uh, Ricky Knight Jr. gets the win in 21 minutes by pinfall with the 450 splash. Uh, Ricky Knight Jr. on the top of his game as he has been recently, despite obviously losing in the last couple of weeks, losing his Princess title. He is back with a vengeance and, you know, he's looking good. Always has been. Uh, Chaz as well looked really good. You know, Chaz is great in the ring, um, but he was distracted, not by anyone, but distracted by his own thoughts. He was so paranoid and expected Phantasma to just pop up out of nowhere uh, that he wasn't fully focused on the match and he clearly didn't listen to William Regal's advice and that may have cost him a place in the next round. Uh, but Ricky Knight Jr. is through and he is very happy to be through. He will be facing whoever wins our main event match tonight, which is between Tyler Bate, former king of the Lariat League, and Cara Noir, someone who is not shy towards those main event matches. But let's continue with the show, which I believe is a tag team match next. It is an 81. Whoa. Uh, in a bout that had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd, it is Lycos Jim who defeat Spike Gervais and Charlie Sterling in just under 19 minutes when Lycos Sr. makes Spike Trevay tap with the Blood Moon. Uh, Lycos Jr. with a 65, not the best. He normally does better than that. Lycos Sr. with an 83, he is a lad. Um, Spike Trevay with a 63, Charlie Sterling with a 70. Charlie Sterling always does a little bit better in tag team matches, which is why I've coupled him with Spike. Uh, Spike, again, someone I brought in and I was expecting to be a little bit better than he is which is why he's slumming it in the tag division. But this match got the crowd buzzing. Uh, Lycos Jim are obviously an exciting tag team to watch. Um, proves it here with an 81 and an 83 from Lycos himself. So winner, winner, winner. 
Following on from this, though, we head backstage where Ricky Knight Jr. reflects on his win. You know, he's like, I understand that Chaz was distracted. He was expecting Phantasma to appear. And to be honest, I'm glad that El Hijo del Phantasma didn't because I want to earn my victories the right way. And while this may not have been a 100% win on my part because Chaz was distracted, a win is a win. And at the end of the day, that is all that matters. So next week, whoever I'm facing, Tyler Bate, Cara Noir, it doesn't matter. I'm going to get another win. And the week after that, I'm going to get another win. And I'm going to go all the way to Riot. And I'm going to become the number one contender for the King's title. So Will, I know you're watching, buddy. I'll be seeing you soon. So Ricky Knight Jr., very, very optimistic and very confident in his own abilities, which is what you want in a champion and a contender. So can Ricky Knight Jr. go all the way? Let me know in the comments section uh, if you think he can. And if not, who's going to stop him? Is it going to be one of the people in the main event tonight in the next round? We'll have to wait and see. But first, we've spoken to Ricky. Let's see what Chaz is up to. So we're just about to speak to Chaz when out of nowhere, El Hijo, Fanta El Hijo del Fantasma is waiting backstage to take out Chaz. You know, he's got enough respect for LLW to not interfere in matches. But once that bell rings and it's over, it's fair game backstage. Um, although you'd think that. But William Regal's around. Uh, while these two guys are pummeling each other and pushing each other left, right and centre, William Regal's called for security to pull these two men apart. And you know what it's like when William Regal gets angry. Everyone sits down, shuts up and listens. William Regal says, I've had enough of this childish, juvenile behaviour. El Hijo del Fantasma, you come from a rich line of wrestlers, respected wrestlers and luchadors you should know better than this Chaz you're a professional you know a, a real not a real wrestler I can't be saying that well like you are come from an Olympic standard of wrestling you should know respect the two of you should know better whatever this quabble is whatever this issue is it ends at riot because the two of you will face off one-on-one -on -one, no disqualification and Whatever happens in that ring happens, but once the match is over, this problem is over. Do I make myself clear? And Chaz, like little schoolboy he is, he's like, yes, yes, William, yes, yep. And El Hijo del Fantasma kind of realises, you know, what he's let himself succumb to, and he agrees as well. And El Hijo says, I'll see you at Riot. And Chaz says, not if I see you first, because, you know, he's a little bit more a little bit more immature than El Hijo uh, but that match is set I believe that's our second match confirmed for Riot it will be Chaz Betts taking on El Hijo del Fantasma in a no disqualification match and hopefully the end of their bickering as William Regal uh, claims it to be uh, but nice 75 rated segment here. El Hijo did some great work. Chaz again struggling a little bit, which is odd because you'd think after seeing him in real life, he'd be pretty good. But I guess this mod was a while ago. Uh, this is a very old mod that I'm using um, because obviously I haven't updated it while playing this game. But anyways, uh, let's move on to the main event match. It is Tyler Bate taking on Kara Noir in our main event and final first round match let's see what happens 79 not bad i was hoping this one would break into the 80s i mean looking at these numbers an 88 and an 82 it really should have hold on i'm not even going to read the results i want to see what what we got penalized for what did we get penalized for um declining physical ability the fact they're both faces Announcing quality was penalised. Oh, I'm tempted to just sack off Kozlov. Um, I'm, I'm, because if, if he wasn't there, this would be an 84 and 85. I, I bet. Um, but either way, uh, actually, do you know what? We'll do that after this in, in the post where we're looking at the the numbers and the popularity and stuff. We're gonna look for another announcer, and if we can't find one, then we're either gonna sack off Kozlov or 
as I said last episode, just bump his stats up, you know. Um, but either way, in a bout that had superb wrestling, of course it did. It's got these two guys and a decent reaction from the crowd. Tyler Bate gets the win in just under 30 minutes with the Tyler Driver 97. And he advances into the next round to face Ricky Knight Jr. And what a match that is going to be. Cora Noir unfortunately out in the first round, but that doesn't say anything about his ability. He was against Tyler Bate, a former king of the Larry League, someone who is, you know, always defying the odds. So Cora Noir, you can hold your head high when, or well, I guess they do, because post-match we get a nice little handshake between these two excellent faces and they celebrate together post-match. Cora Noir, of course, giving Tyler Bate the ring to celebrate on his own. And that is how we end this one. 77 overall, I will take it. I didn't expect this one to be crazy high given that we didn't hit the 80s in that main event, but Lycos Jim kind of blew us away with an 81 in our kind of mid-card match. Uh, but yeah, really good show here. Aisha Ray is back and has her eyes set on May Sarah and that title. Uh, Chaz seems to be in the naughty books for William Regal, as does El Hijo, but it has got them a pay-per-view match. So who's the real winner? Let's be honest. Uh, Ricky Knight Jr. and Tyler Bate advance into the next round. Um, I can actually show you that tournament when we get into the admin stuff after this so we can see who's in the next round. And yeah, pretty good card overall. I'm very happy with it. Let's simulate to the end of the month and see how our money and popularity are looking. See you guys in a sec. Okay, apologies because I just wasn't paying attention. I was just playing the game um, and noticed that I went one day over. So, you know, feel free to have a go at me. I'm really sorry. Uh, but we are now in July. Uh, we've got a Larry League in London show tomorrow night. And then at the end of the month slash first day of August, we have got Riot. So, uh, yeah, very exciting. We're slowly building towards that. But... The important things to look at is this little boy here. Um, we made $284,000 uh, this month. Our broadcast revenue was apparently $392. Okay. Uh, ton from sponsors that keeps going up. Merchandise is going up and up, mainly because one, we're signing more popular people so even though Kofi Mensa isn't exactly someone who's going to be you know being here week in week out because you've got on a, on a PPA and he's got quite high popularity I assume he helps with the merch sales I don't really know how it works but um, I took someone's advice from ages ago and I've just been slowly upgrading merchandise every month or whenever I get the email to be like we finished upgrading not going to do any more until you tell me to that day I then just hit upgrade again so yeah we're doing all right i can't remember what all that money was all that time ago it must have been something uh oh that might have been when i bought a company out probably uh but yeah we're in the two millions we're doing good um can't complain obviously the cost of workers is i mean it was insane for that month wow maybe that was uh when joanna y was here week in week out <laughs> um but yeah, we're doing okay for the costs. I don't think any of the costs are crazy. Show costs, you know, quite high. Um, but you find that we get like a dip and then we get a peak because the peak is normally a pay-per-view month. Um, so July might be a bit of a dip in show costs. Um, yeah, there's not much else to learn from this. If anyone kind of knows, what's financial estimates? What's that about? Is this how much they think things will cost? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we're not losing money, so I'll take that. Um, well, yeah, we just need to start building cash, I think, especially if we want to start competing with bigger brands because there's been a whole host of NXT and WWE names that have come into my inbox to say that their contracts are expiring, but WWE are just throwing stupid money at them. Um, B Priestley was one. Um that I would love, or Blair Davenport, sorry, as she's known, I think, in NXT. 
she's someone that I'd love to bring in. I know that Will Ospreay is not a big fan of her anymore because they broke up or whatever, but I would I wanted to bring her in. I tried so many different ways to to match the offer, and they it all kept coming back with, I'd accept these offers, but WWE are giving me stupid money. I think they ended up giving her like 24 a month, which isn't actually isn't that crazy, but in this game that's quite high for someone who isn't even on the main card. Um and like uh, Walter, um, so sorry, Gunther was available. Not that I was planning on bringing him in because there's no way I could afford him. But like New Japan Impact, as Impact, I've got money. Um, they all went in for him. They were all offering like 200 and something thousand a month. Um, but WWE ended up securing him for like 140. Um, but that's just because WWE have that pull. Because they're the biggest company in the game, they don't have to spend as much. So, yeah, I just need to be smart with who I sign and who I don't. I'm normally picking up the ones that WWE and co. aren't signing on, and then I'll just take them on a paper appearance. Um, there's a few people in the indies, like I think um, Finn Balor's been in the indies for a while now, and he's someone that I might pick up eventually, I don't know. Uh, but either way, we've looked at that, let's look at our popularity. So we are 70 in southern England, which is great. Uh, 58, 55 in those surrounding areas. And we're slowly growing everywhere else. If we just look, um, USA, we're, we're doing all right. So New England, 61. You know, we're doing quite well in America. We're slowly growing a bit more. Um, I think it's going to be a long old slog to get to big because it says here, achieve 77 pop in all five mainland british region so i'm assuming that's midlands northern england southern england and wales because ireland's not mainland is scotland mainland oh wait one two three four five oh yeah everything but ireland so we might have to maybe do a few shows in scotland and wales maybe um yeah so we look at our progress yeah, we're, we're growing steadily in all of these quite quickly, but it's the, yeah, it's the outer ones that aren't doing very well. The only trouble is if we do a show in Scotland, obviously our ticket sales and things like that will go down. Um, but I think our shows will still be good because our wrestlers are still good and popular, especially like we've got some good Scottish wrestlers. I might do that. Let's... Let's do a show in Scotland, even though it's called Lariat League in London. We'll do a show in Scotland. We'll do a pay-per-view. No, we won't do a pay-per-view because that's where we make big money. Um, we'll do a show in Scotland in the next couple episodes just to see. Wales, I'm not really too fussed about. Although, surely if we just do a show in one of these two. So Northern England will have the rub on Scotland. Midlands, I think, will have the rub on Wales. Yeah. Yeah, we'll try. Because I think Southern England has the rub on Midlands and Northern England. No, not Northern England, on Midlands. Midlands has a rub on Northern England. Northern England has a rub. Yeah, I don't really know how it works. But either way, that's where we are. Um, Kozlov, where are you? Let's have a look at your stats. Because I think this is the last thing to really look at. Um, colour is 84. What? Is he listed as an announcer then? Or is William Regal dragging us down? Well, yeah. 73 announcing. So he said the announcing is struggling. So William Regal is actually the problem. Mm, okay. Let's, um, oh no, let's just, uh, da, 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 da. we're looking for... No, not works for. We want to change that back to any. Oh, f fuck. There we go. Um, status, nationality, works in. Where's the role? We want an announcer. Because if we can get Regal off the desk um, and just have him as like a full-time personality, that would be great. Announcer, and then we want the announcing to be... Well, 73 is apparently not good. So let's go 77 or higher. And obviously, uh, intention to hire popularity does not matter i think that should what so there's no announcer anywhere so oh active wrestler any status 
There we go. Ian Riccoboni. Tom Anathan. Okay. I mean, I'm not mad about that. I'll take announcing 78. What's Ian's? Because I, I quite like Ian as well. Is he over 80? 82! Oh, let's, um, let's talk with him. Hey, Ian. Would you like to work in the British Isles? Yes. Hey, Ian. Would you like to work for us? Exclusive written? Oh, no, not for that money. But... Well, let's do our little template here. A uh, thousand per show. Um, one year. Let's go two years. Let's give him some cut of the match. Sure. And I think... So he's at Ring of Honor and New Japan. So now we need to see... Uh, let's sort by size. A Ring of Honor and New Japan are above us. Let's view New Japan's profile. Do that, does it tell us who their announcers are? Events and TV? No, don't want that. Product, feuds, titles, tag team, alumni, news, show, history, relationships. No, it doesn't tell us who their main announcers are anywhere. Key personnel, booker, figurehead. No. If someone knows how to find this out, let me know. Um, what about, wait, hold on. If we go shows, will this set tell us here? No. Events and TV. Doesn't tell you who the announcers are on any of this, does it? No. Okay. All right. Well, New Japan and Ring of Honor are above us. I'm assuming Ian Riccoboni is used for Ring of Honor at least. He's probably just sitting there wallowing with New Japan. Um, as and when he signs, I'll check to see what is guaning with his schedule. Obviously, if there's a clash, then we'll sack him off. We'll go for Tom Hannafan. But Tom Hannafan is with these guys, isn't he? Uh, let's go back. He's with Impact, right? Oh, no, PWG. Okay, so Hannafan's an option, but he's only one point higher than Regal anyway. So there's no point. Um, and Aura Murata doesn't speak English I'm going to assume we can have a look personal info yeah just Japanese um, but what's his thingy majig of oh, 79 okay I feel like we need an 80 plus which Ian Rick Riccoboni so Kozlov I'm sorry <laughs> we've been slagging Kozlov us for weeks um, when it's William Regal who's been fucking up the announcing um, but yeah anyways let's go back to the Fed sorry let's just look at the the size and see where we are. So we're here. We're now above Noah and DDT and New Japan of America, which is great. Um, we're closing in on Dragon Gate. I mean, obviously, these companies have got so much more money than us. Although, I don't understand how GCW sits so high. I don't understand that. Because they don't put on great shows. I've been looking at them. They're small. They're ranked eighth for some reason. Four milli. Like... You know, they, they, they haven't got anything crazy. Like, look, that's their top five. Our top five shits all over that. Their top 100s, 62 is their best event. Their best matches are 79. Like, let's just take a look at us. I mean, tall company. Look at that top. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, no. I did so well until then, didn't I? Oh. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert, Jey Uso, a.k.a. Joshua Fatu, has signed with us. I mean, to be honest, in real life, it would leak in the dirt sheets, wouldn't it? It'd be like, rumour! Yeah, Joshua Fatu has signed. He hasn't actually joined us yet, but he has signed. Um, yeah. That's another thing to look at here, just ignoring that now. Uh, we're ranked 11th, but the 21st richest. Also, Madoka Kakuta um, in our top five. But yeah, let's just continue this comparison because it annoys me. Look at our shows. Like, 62 was their best, right? Look, our top 100 are almost just as good. And then matches. I mean, look, come on. Come on, look at all these. Mm, it annoys me. Uh, oh, yeah, it says it there as well, you know. Oh, we also signed Pauline Little. Uh, Pauline Little, yeah, from our academy. That's the picture it gave us. It does give them pictures. Um, I just, I really enjoyed the picture. Her stats are crap, but I enjoyed the picture. 
so she'll be used at some point um but yeah we've got um might as well just show you now yeah we've brought in Jeyu, so he'll be as joshua fatu um i'm thinking we can rekindle this anawaii global um with joshua fatu kind of coming in to claim that he's taking the reins but um yeah i mean i'm not going to reveal my hand completely whoa hold on a second um but yeah i think i've, I've now shown and spoiled everything <laughs> but that is that's pretty much it i guess there's not much else to do except keep booking <laughs> so yeah i don't think there's anything else to look at should we should we just see who's hireable uh let's go to hire we want an active wrestler um min popularity i'd say 40 like it was before role wrestler can work in doesn't worry because don't worry about that because we can just be like hey you're all good um I've, I've got a long old short list but we'll ignore that for now basics i always want that to be good so let's go 70 let's try that oh there's loads oh i should have done 40 in the uk british isles there we go there we go a little a little bit shorter it's basically all of wwe plus random people i mean aj styles we can bring in but we saw how crap he was um in uh what's it called um our aew series spoiler ben carter um or nathan fraser actually um tried to sign him it didn't work out um, you know, there's some people we could bring in. There's quite a few, you know, like Carmella. Oh, Carmella's beautiful. Carmella's available. Christian Cage is unemployed, but he's old as balls. Um, yeah, there's a few people that we can bring in. Um, these are all hireable as well, which is great to see. Uh, Flash Morgan Webster, I tried to bring him back in, but he's just not happy with me. Because uh, I think I've hired and fired him more than once. Um... I mean, we could bring in Jimmy as well, uh, or, or Jonathan, sorry. He's the AEW International Champion, but he doesn't wrestle for AEW. Oh, because it's a, um, it's one of those titles, an alliance belt, isn't it? Um, Johnny Gargano we could bring in. Moxley, not going to happen. Kyrie could happen. Carl Anderson, Kenta. Kira Hogan we had for like a week, I think. And then she was like, see ya. I mean, that's an exclusive handshake. If I even try and touch him, it will go to a written the same way um, it did for Zack Sabre Jr. Um, yeah, we got some pretty sick names here. Like, if I'll just hold this down and you guys can just pause. You've got Prince Prince Devitt, um, Risa, Sarah, she's hot. RJ City, love the guy. Samoa Joe's terrible in this game. Like, Seth Rollins, I think he's still on hiatus. Yeah, he's in politics. Tempted to just steal him the second he comes back. You know, Bray Wyatt is still alive in this game. I feel weird trying to sign him, so I don't think I ever will. But he's here. He's doing all right. Uh, Yamato, I'm a big fan of. Tony Deppen, I'm a big fan of. But I don't think he'll work. He might, actually. 50 pop? Where did that come from? Yeah, it might be worth going through this at some point. Um, yeah, I think I'm spending a lot of time in the admin. That's the trouble with me. I feel like I could sit in the admin um section of this game like i spend more time in here than i do actually booking stuff but i'm gonna stop now we're not gonna finish it on him do you know what? we might as well finish it on jonathan fatu not jonathan joshua fatu oh my god uh because i ruined it anyway so here he is he's joining llw soon um we, we won't see him for a while though i've got no plans for him until maybe post riot so uh yeah but anyways that's the end really sorry for this long ending um it might be that you guys just zone out and click off and you don't even see that i've brought him in so fingers crossed that happens <laughs> um but yeah that's the end i still don't have an outro so i'm just gonna say thank you for watching like subscribe do all that and uh yeah i'll see you guys in the next episode bye